Hey church, Ellen here, loving going through the book of Matthew. Today we are going to be in chapter 15, right at the end, and we're going to really focus in on this interaction that Jesus has with a Canaanite woman. And I love this passage. It's actually super revealing, but you have to kind of um, really lean in because there are some bad teachings around this interaction that Jesus has. Some people start to tip their toe in blasphemy and some just dive head first in. So you may have heard a really terrible teaching on this, um, and I'm not saying that mine is gonna be perfect, but I think it's really important that any time we see Jesus do something or to say something that we don't understand at first, we may even go, oh, Jesus, my goodness, that was so harsh, right? We need to pause and we need to look a little closer because I can promise you every time that I have done that, 100% of the time, the mistake is on my end, right? It's my interpretation that was incorrect. It was me pushing my understanding or modern uh, lens onto scripture. And then I see, oh, okay, here was where I was off. This is what Jesus was trying to say. Everything he says and does is perfect. Can we agree on that before we start? Amen. Okay. So this actually shows Jesus' compassion uh, if, we, if we look a little closer. So basically, Jesus has just had a lot of discourse with the Pharisees about being clean versus unclean. And it was tense, as it always is. And Jesus decides that he needs to rest and he goes, which is pretty common for Jesus, but then he does something very uncommon. He goes to a place called Tyre. And this was not normal for Jesus to do because it was outside of Israel. He, Jesus had not done this. So um, it was also notoriously, this place was notoriously unclean. And it was an ancient enemy of Israel. The Canaanites had always been enemies uh, of Israel. And so Jesus kind of does this strange thing when he goes there. And then he encounters this woman who is following them. She's calling him the son of David, which is very strange because she's recognizing him as Messiah. Okay, and so that's like strange because they're not, in, they're not in Israel. And so there's this pagan woman who's addressing him as the son of David, and she's begging for healing for her daughter who is demon possessed. And Jesus says nothing to her at first. He, it's not that he's ignoring her, but he's not giving her a reply. And the disciples are like, tell her to get out of here. Like Jesus is trying to rest, leave him alone, right? But um, she bothered us with all her begging is what they say. And then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. So he's saying, no, not you, right? And then she came again and worshiped him pleading, Lord, help me. So she's called him son of David. Now she's calling him Lord. And Jesus responded, it isn't right to take the food from the children and throw it to the dogs. And this is where we go. Oh my goodness. A couple of things. A better translation would be little dogs. The word that he uses is not a derogatory term for dogs. He actually uses that elsewhere in scripture. That is not what this is. He's referring to like a pet, like a, a little household dog. Um, and he's not calling her a dog or her people a dog. He's making a point. He's saying, listen, when you have dinner for your children, do you feed your pets first or do you feed your children first? And he's saying, obviously, I I'm going to feed my children first. And this is where people misinterpret it. They think um, that Jesus was calling her a derogatory term. He was not. And her response, some people are like, yeah, she, you know, she tells Jesus where, you know, her, she gives him a piece of her mind and she changes his mind. That is not what happens here. Look at what she says. She replied, that's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. I actually love this back and forth they're having. It's almost like when you read a text and you can't quite understand the tone of it because they're kind of having this like back and forth that Jesus clearly is sort of enjoying. But at the end, you'll see that. But she actually is coming not with pride in her heart or demanding self-respect. She's humbled in the presence of the Lord. And she's saying, that's true. What she's saying is, I have no claim. As a child of Israel, I have no claim on the blessings of Abraham. I have no claim on this. And so she's agreeing with him. She's not asking for what the children get, but she says, even the dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. So she's, she's like, 
even if you could just give me a crumb, Lord, that would be enough. Spurgeon says, as a shepherd, he may not gather her yet, but as Lord, he may help her, which is a great picture of what's going on here. Jesus is staying focused. He's saying, listen, I'm, that's not the time for this yet. And yet she seems to understand the overflow of Jesus's grace. She sees that there's enough for the children to be given what they need and for her to get some overflow from that. And then Jesus says, dear woman, your faith is great and your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. I just love this. I actually find it like I wish I could have seen it all uh, play out. And there's actually a couple of parallels here too. Um, it also comes really interestingly enough after this conversation that Jesus is having about being clean and unclean. And he's talking about how these clean people are rejecting him. And yet this unclean woman here is begging for his mercy at his feet. And she's worshiping him and calling him her Lord. And yet she's unclean, but here she is loving the Lord and receiving his mercy and grace for her versus these clean people who reject him. And you can see it's, it's a heart issue like it always is with Jesus. This is not a race issue. This is not a gender issue. Jesus had Canaanites in his genealogy. We just talked about that the other weekend, okay? So it's not, it's not a race issue. This is about her heart and coming before the Lord and him extending his grace to her. And she didn't change his mind, right? Um, it was always Jesus's plan to rescue us all. And it's interesting because it also makes me think of another parable that Jesus taught about this king having a banquet. And they're saying, you know, send out the invitations. And the people who were originally invited, they reject it. They don't want to come. And then he says, you go out in the streets and you pull in everybody, lame people, bring them in, carry them in. I don't care. I want, I want my table full. And y'all, that's a picture of what's happening right now. It's like a foreshadowing that he's talking to this woman about. Um, because the children who were originally offered this grace, many of them refused it. And so then Jesus now extends it out to the Gentiles. And so we get a little bit of a picture um, of Jesus's heart for us Gentiles here. And um, R.C. Sprouse, is that his name? I Sprout? I don't know. It's like completely, I just exited my mind. Anyways, he has a great quote and he said, um, would any of you trade in your crumbs of salvation? I would not, right? I would not create, trade in even just the crumb of salvation that the Lord would offer me. Um, and then Jesus goes on uh, to verse 29. He continues healing in this sort of near this region. And then in verse 32, he feeds the multitudes again. We have just seen him just a second ago feed the 5,000, right? And now here he is. He says, I have compassion on these people and he wants to feed them. And the, the disciples are like, how are we ever going to do that? And I'm like, didn't you guys just do this? Like, didn't you just see him do this? Whatever. Anyways, different story, a different part of the story. Um, but when you look at these two times that Jesus fed the multitude, it's really interesting because the first time he fed the 5,000, it was a very Jewish, um, uh, the symbolism was very Jewish. Okay. The numbers and the location all had to do with kind of the Jewish tradition. But this time it was predominantly Gentiles that he was feeding and the numbers and the location and all the symbolism points to his love for the Gentiles. And man, that's so good because they didn't even know what Jesus was about to do for the whole earth. I mean, it wasn't even until the book of Acts that we understood that it was now opened up even to the Gentile. And so praise God for his compassion on all of humanity, that all who would turn to him and call him Lord and recognize their need for him in their life would be saved. I am so thankful for the compassion of Jesus. Amen. Y'all be blessed today.